Yeah. It's in this one too. So there you go. Um, I guys really click it like talking about glu um, glycolysis. So you start with um, a, mole a molecule of glucose, and using hexokinase, it's um, in in one ATP, it's converted into um, glucose six phosphate. Of course, that ATP is going to turn into an ADP. Changing from glucose six phosphate to fructose six phosphate. Of course, glucose and fructose are both um, six carbon sugars, as we learned in class. So um, they're isomers of one another. So it's it's logical that the um, enzyme there would be called an isomerase. And then going from fructose six phosphate to um, fructose one six bisphosphate, uh, you use phosphofructokinase, which once again is a very logically named enzyme because you got fructose and then. Um, you're adding a phosphate group, so it's so it's a kinase. So you have fus um, sorry fructofosphokinase or phosphofructokinase. I mean, and you lose one more ATP there, meaning your net total so far is negative two. Um, into the fourth stage of glycolysis. Then once you have your fructose one six biphosphate bisphosphate, um, you break that down with aldolase, and this is kind of probably the most complex step in glycolysis. Um, it's con it's converted into dihydroxyacetone phosphate and also into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. Um, however, that um, for glycolysis, that dihy dihydroxyacetone phosphate will pretty quickly be converted into glycerol glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, so we'll get two of those. And um, everything from here on out will be two molecules. And um, of course, the fructose 1,6-biphosphate, bisphosphate, that's a six carbon sugar, so now we have two trioses, or three carbon sugars. Um, and that's, once again, um, a, an easy way to remember the enzyme, because the enzyme is called triose, three carbon sugar, phosphate, isomerase, um, triose, phosphate, isomerase. Uh, it just, you know, it, it's really like mutually reinforcing to remember what that is. When you go from the next step, which is glyceraldehyde three phosphate, um, I think the enzyme you use is glyceraldehyde phosphate dehydrogenase, and um, in that step you actually get two NADH. So that's that's kind of the first time we get something useful out of glycolysis. Um, and then glyceraldehyde three phosphate is converted into one three bisphosphate glycerate. Now, of course, if you're going to add a phosphate in there, you need that needs to come some, from somewhere. So it comes from orthophosphate, which is an inorganic form of phosphate. Um, and then, you know, as soon as you incorporate that um, that orthophosphate, that that gets actually taken out. Um, well, not taken out, but it gets converted into ATP, and you get two ATP out of this step. Um, and of course, if you get ATP or phosphorylation or, or dephosphorylation, it's going to be a kinase. And in fact, the um, let me make sure I get this right. Yeah, the enzyme is called phosphoglycerate kinase or kinase. Um, so you know, if you're losing two phosphates, you're going to go from one three bisphosphate glycerate to just three phosphate glycerate. So those um, two ATP come from two different molecules of 1,3-bisphosphate glycerate, and in particular, it's the, uh, it's the phosphate group attached to the 1 carbon. So now you have 3-phosphate glycerate, and um, that, that just gets trans, uh, transformed into 2-phosphate um, glycerate using mutase. And you would expect that to be an isomerase, but it's actually not. It's a mutase, which, you know, those molecules are very similar, so I guess the name mutase makes sense there, too. The last few steps are, are relatively easy. You just have... 2-phosphate glycerate, that gets transformed into phosphoerol pyruvate by enolase, and then um, that last phosphate group um, from the phosphoerol, that last phosphate group there is going to give you your final two ATPs, giving you a net total of two ATPs for um, for glycolysis, and that, and that um, you know, once again, if you have ATP, you're going to have a kinase, and that's just called pyruvate kinase. So that phosphoerol pyruvate will give you pyruvate, and um, then you're ready for for whatever um, metabolic thing is going to happen next. Um, in the context that we learned it in, of course, it'll be um, the intermediate step next. However, with what we learned about amphibolic pathways, conceivably that um, pyruvate could be used to synthesize completely different molecules that aren't even um, sugars. So, you know, there you have it. There's glycolysis. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.